All right, well, we got this uh, little repair project come in. This is a skid steer vibrating roller. I believe these are these are the Chinese uh, brand, but it's uh, it's it's brand new. Uh, they used it for maybe about five minutes, and they noticed smoke um, and rubber smell coming out of the. Uh, the end it has the motor in it so we're gonna be taking that checking that out seeing what it's about um, the other issue with these things is uh, a lot of people have the same issue here um, this rotating pivot uh, you can see where they trimmed the bottom of this it doesn't fit on the normal uh, a lot of this a lot of the uh, the normal skid steers it does work on the uh, the Bobcats they have uh, they have an opening here um, so we're gonna be taking a look at that she trimmed it but the problem with that is is when it rotates it's still gonna hit so I uh, might be taking another skid steer um, plate putting it on top or, or possibly fabbing that out some other way but uh, cheapest route is just for me just to weld another plate right on there so it's got basic three three hydraulic hoses uh, this is a low flow unit case drain on the pump um, I didn't see any type of manufacturing tag on it uh, so hopefully hopefully we can figure this sucker out um, it feels like it weighs somewhere near I don't know I'd say about about 1200 pounds or so um, so my uh, my need for it after I get it fixed is I'm getting these millings coming in and uh, I've been using a small plate compactor and I'm going to be uh, testing it out on that form. Get another couple truckloads in here and uh, see what it does. But uh, it's going to be an ongoing project probably throughout the winter here uh, as I got time and uh, as I learn uh, more about it. All right, another day back on the roller project. Uh, I meant to get to it a lot earlier, but uh, it's already springtime. Got to get it rolling here. So um, this is obviously the Chinese made in China uh, uh, vibrating drum roller. Um, like I showed you in the other video, uh, when you activated it, um, it just started pouring out smoke right behind the, the motor. So, finally got in here. I got the uh, the motor disassembled. Um, I did find a couple things here. Uh, I still have to clean it up. There is a grease fitting down here. So this didn't have grease in it. Um, and then I did, there is another grease fitting back in here. Um, they expect you to get through this hole, but actually it needs to be down here. So I re-drilled it um, to access it. When I went to pull this apart, this hole was actually smaller than the flange that's inside here. So I had to cut the notch. When I'll, I'll just clean this up here when I put it all back together. But here's what I found. So the way this, this drum works is there's an axle. There's two bearings, one on each side, heavy-duty bearings. Uh, an axle that runs down the middle, and there's two counterweights on that axle. Um, just kind of spaced out in there. The hydraulic motor drives the axle and it produces the vibration. So in order to prevent damage to the motor, there is a coupling on there made from rubber that uh, that was causing the issue. So really easy to take apart. Basically, um, I had to pull the flange off, just, just some Allen head bolts. Once I pulled this off, uh, this love joy this is actually love called a love joy connector it's a different from the uh from the cog style that you're used to but it's still a love joy uh and this is an lf series style um multiple different configurations you can look that up on the on the website for uh for love joy products um this is obviously a chinese knockoff of it so this piece here actually bolts to uh the axle flange inside there so you pull those four off, and then it just pops out. This is obviously splined to the same shaft 
as the motor. Um, when I pulled it apart, I noticed that this piece here was popped out of it. So it was mechanically still connected. Uh, would it continue to run? I think so. Probably to the point where it broke off the bolts and whatnot. So it's a good thing we did stop it before continuing on. So I did some research on the web website. I did see a number four. It says uh, size four on this. Um, I basically went to the Lovejoy website and they have all kinds of formulas. And I worked out the RPM of the motor uh, versus um, how fast the drum axle is going to spin. Uh, they have a service duty, um, a service duty chart that you can determine, you know, how strong the rubber needs to be. Um, it just so happens that what I figured for this system needing was a three series. Um, connector it's it's a higher density rubber and I believe the rubber that I had to settle for is a one series so the chart on there tells you what the one series is good for a lot of a uh, lot of generators and hydraulic motors and whatnot but uh, it'll work um, ideally it's not the right size for this this setup and that's probably why it failed originally uh, combined with you know uh, China rubber who knows how long it was sitting out there before it got sold. It could be, this thing could have been 10 years old before it even got used. Um, but the way this works, like I said, slides onto the shaft, and then this connects up to there. So it's it's made to absorb up to a three degree um, misalignment and also absorb some vibrations. So you have three bolt holes here, and then you have two, or actually three more through the sides, and they bolt into the center hub. So, and this is, like I say, slides on there. This setup from what I'm reading, um, a lot of people, Lovejoy actually recommends it for prototyping equipment. So if you're thinking about designing your own equipment, this is something that you could do um, and adapt. So anyways, I ordered the LF4 um, series. It's the only one with the measurements that would match up. So um, eBay, uh, I believe is 100 and 160 some bucks so about a week out for it so when it comes in we'll slide it all together and uh this thing needs to go out to a job asap so uh keep you guys updated